Hi guys! So today I have what I consider to be a bit of a fun video for you all. Um, perhaps maybe a bit of a show-offy kind of a video, but I'm gonna call this indulgent baby buys. And when I say indulgent, I don't mean that these are really expensive baby items. A lot of them are actually quite cheap or affordable. When I say indulgent, I just mean that these are the things that I've bought for baby that when I look at them, they make me smile, they warm my heart. These are the things that I really look forward to seeing baby interact with. Uh, and a lot of these things are like really small things, like it's nothing big. It's just that these are the things that just make me really happy. Um, I haven't bought a lot for the baby because for me, I feel like my mothering style or my instinct for being a mother is that baby does not need a lot. Um, so we just haven't purchased a ton of items for the baby. So these are kind of like things that like fall out of the boundaries for what I consider to be necessities. And these are just kind of things that like I couldn't resist buying and I wanted anyway. Um, cause really I won't say that everything that I've bought for baby has been necessity, but I've really bought like bare, bare basics. I've bought, you know, cloth diapers clothing, you know, car seat, like really like obvious, like these are the things you need for your baby. And honestly, like even things like clothes, I haven't bought a lot of clothes for the baby. Most of the clothes that I have, well, yeah, I'd say like 90% of the clothes for baby that I've bought are onesies. And then I don't have, I don't think I've bought a single outfit for baby as far as like the really cute overdone outfits. Um, you know, everything's just really simple, functional. Most of the onesies that I've even purchased are just like the kind that come in the multi-packs that are like really cheap and affordable. Um, but you know, we all have to buy fun stuff for the kids as well because sometimes it's just really hard to hold back and you just, you know, they make me happy, so why not? Um, so I'm gonna start with the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is this book because we are already reading this to baby. And this is, um, Oh Baby, The Places You'll Go, a book to be read in utero. And this is based on Dr. Seuss, but it's actually, the author, I guess, is Tish Rabe. It says, adapted by Tish Rabe from the works of Dr. Seuss. And we have been reading this, well, I say we. My husband has been reading this to baby every night since I started my third trimester. Um, so I'm gonna be 32 weeks on Monday and today is Friday. So it's almost been a month that we've been reading this to the baby and it just, it warms my heart so much. It's like kind of sing-songy cause it's like based on Dr. Seuss. So it's very, um, you know, rhymey and silly like Dr. Seuss is. But what I love about this is that I get to see a bond forming between baby and daddy already. Um, you know, in the very beginning, I think my husband read it more to make me happy because, you know, I wanted him to bond with baby. And it's not that he wasn't in love with the baby. It's just obviously he's more detached from the situation than I am because I have this growing inside of me and you know, a lot of times I feel bad for him because he doesn't get to have the experience that I get to experience. Like, men aren't given the choice or the opportunity to feel this. Um, so this was just kind of like a way that I thought he could bond with baby. And it's great because in the beginning, um, you know, the baby wasn't super responsive, but as time has gone on, it's become more and more responsive to him. And now at this point, he gets a couple pages in and my stomach just starts to move. Um, and you know, so like obviously baby loves story time. My husband loves story time. I mean, he gets so excited when he sees that the baby's responding to his voice. And it's just, it's absolutely heartwarming. It's the sweetest thing. So, you know, I don't think you have to read this book to the baby, but just the idea of reading to your baby 
while it's in the womb. Um, I think it's somewhere around 20 weeks or after 20 weeks that baby can start to hear you um, and it's the reason we did it in the third trimester is because that's supposed to be really when baby hears the best um, like it's I think the you know the development of the ear is really well developed I don't know so yeah I love that I should stop I need I have other things to talk about I need to like stop saying so much okay but that's absolute favorite love it maybe I have a lot to say about it because we're actually using it right now and I'm, in, I'm excited to see how baby responds to the same book after it's been born because a lot of people who read books to baby or play music to baby in the womb will say that when baby's born that you can tell that it's familiar with it and that you know it it's off it's often very soothing for baby because it's in this new environment that it doesn't know but this is something that baby remembers and it reminds them of being in the womb and it reminds them of that safe space. Next item. Um, I'll stick with books just because I started with one. So um, this is like the first book that I plan to give to baby to play with. It's a um, black and white book with just a little bit of yellow accents because it's um, newborns don't see very well and they respond the best to high contrast items so you know as an adult this might look really um not interesting like because I think you know we're attracted to colorful I like colorful things I love color but um you know colors will just all muddle together to the baby and it won't really be able to see a lot so um any high contrast items that you can give to baby like black and white even if you just want to go on the computer and print out some really simple black and white images to hold up for baby but um yeah this is just um I don't even know what brand this book is but if you just look up high contrast or black and white baby books online um, they're fairly easy to come across and this one is just faces so it's got daddy mummy and baby and that's it and then obviously it's a cloth book it's tactile it makes noise um, so I just think that the baby will really like this and this is more for the newborn stage um, of baby's life I just reading is so important to me um, I've always loved books growing up. I used to go to the library with my father because um, he was one that just would take us to the library. And I used to like check out like stacks of books and go home and I would read them and then we'd go back to the library the next week, return them, get a new stack of books. Um, yeah, so like just, you know, establishing like, not that I ha my kid has to love books the way I did, but just introducing them like something that I loved growing up you know introducing that into their life at a very early age is important to me so you know I want to start reading I'm going to be reading books to my baby before it even understands what I'm saying to it or at least we think they don't understand and we don't actually know that do we um yeah so this book and then the next book that I'm going to introduce to the baby um will be this one and this is pet tales and this is a jelly cat book um, and it says Ann Wilkinson for Jelly Cat, so I guess Ann Wilkinson's the one who wrote the book. But this I just love because, like, this is obviously more colorful, so this is when baby starts, um, you know, its eyes are more developed. This will be after the baby's, you know, been around for a few months. I'll bring this book out. And this one has that same, like, tactile, like, crinkly noise, um, you know, same kind of fabric book. But this one has lots of different tactile um, things to feel so it's got all these tails sticking out of animals and obviously we want to create this love of animals for our baby because we will raise our child vegan of course um, and it's just great because there's just like lots to touch and feel um, it does actually have words that you can read to baby while it's um, you know having a sensory experience because um, obviously baby's not going to be reading this but what I love about this book so much is that 
even though it's like super super baby friendly I feel like with all these tails and stuff that it'll even be kind of like toddler friendly like I could see you know a one-year-old and a two-year-old and maybe even like a three-year-old like still enjoying like looking at this book or playing with this book every now and again just because it's so tactile like you know there's like fun little tails sticking out of it um will this actually happen I have no idea like maybe an older child will absolutely think this is ridiculous but regardless I think it's sweet it's so cute so that's the next book that I have for the kid um and then you know basically just read regular books to the child regular kids books I have already started my collection on that I want loads of kids books though so if anybody out there family watching friends watching children's books get me children's books that's what I want um, yeah, so this was made by Jelly Cat. Now, Jelly Cat is better known for their stuffed animals. And I couldn't resist. I have two. Um, and I really had to restrict myself to stick with just two of these. I, I would easily have at least a dozen of these if I just bought every single one that I thought was adorable and cute. Um, so this was really holding back. But... Jelly cats are just the absolute softest, cuddliest, sweetest stuffed animals, in my opinion, on the market. Um, they're just really nice quality. They're absolutely sweet. And, you know, they're not, they're not crazy expensive. They're not overpriced. I mean, I've seen, like, stuffed animals, like teddy bears and stuff out there that, you know, like, hundred dollars two hundred dollars like really ridiculous I mean obviously that's like high-end crazy prices I'm talking about but like it's a stuffed animal like why does it need to be that expensive um I'm in the UK obviously so I don't know how much jelly cats retail for in the US but in the UK um these are both medium size this is a uh, bashful bunny and Bashful Bunny is probably their most common, most well-known, iconic stuffed animal, as far as I know. They make it in lots of different colors. Some of them have like really cute floral patterns um, in the ears. And a medium-sized Bashful Bunny in the UK retails at 16 pounds. Um, and I've seen these sold at... Um, John Lewis and Jojo Mama and Bebe. I'm sure there's other places you can buy them as well. Um, and then this is a Fuddle Waddle um, elephant, obviously. And the Fuddle Waddle elephant, well, the Fuddle Waddles in a medium size as well, um, retail for 17 pounds. So they're not that expensive. I mean, they're not like super, super cheap, but you know, they're not that expensive. They're really high quality and I hope or expect that my child will love these for years and years to come. Um, you know, and I do hope to add to the collection at some point. I just, I don't see a reason or a need to have like loads of stuffed animals at the moment, but um, I definitely have other ones that I really want to buy. Um, and the medium size is my favorite size. They come smaller, they come larger, but to me, this is a really great size to go from a baby to a toddler. You know, it's not too small, it's not too big. Um, Cause in my opinion, the smaller size to me is cute for a newborn, maybe a bit too small for a toddler. Where the larger size to me is just way too big for a newborn or a baby in general. Um, I wouldn't be giving these to my kid right away when they're like little, little, cause they do have um, eyeballs. <laughs> they have like button eyes that I guess could potentially come out. They seem really secure, but you just never know with kids. They stick things in their mouth. They like to play with things and babies are strong. Babies are really strong. So these are more for show or, you know, maybe for like, maybe introduce them like when they're young um, but I'm around 
but um, I do have something separate for when the baby is a newborn. And that is one of these. And this is a, um, some people call them a comforter, some people call them a lovey. Basically, it's, and the idea is that it's a cross between a security blanket and a stuffed animal. And a lot of kids get very, very attached to these. Um, there are lots and lots of brands that make these. Um, Jelly Cat actually makes these as well. This is not a Jelly Cat one though, just because um, I preferred the look and simplicity of this brand. And I want, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure the Jelly Cat ones also have those button eyes. Not positive, but I wouldn't feel personally comfortable giving anything with um, any buttons or, you know, anything that could come off and become a choking hazard to a newborn, especially something that the newborn is meant to really become attached to and like, you know, suck on, hold, snuggle. Um, so this one came from Jojo Mon Bebe, which is just a maternity slash children's wear slash children's items store in the UK. Um, but like I said, lots of other brands make them. The reason why I like the Jojo Mon Bebe one is like I said, it's very, very simple. There's nothing on it that could come off. Plus Jojo Mon Bebe has been making these for years, like years and years. Um, and as far as I know, they have no intention to stop making them. I think it's one of their best selling items. Um, and you know, so I've only got one at the moment, but if I see that my baby becomes very attached to this, because a lot of babies will become very attached to these, um, I will go out and I know that I will not have a hard time finding more. Because basically, if baby becomes attached to this, I will go to Jojo Mon Bebe and I will have, I will buy two more so that I have some to put into rotation so you can, this is machine washable, so you can wash them have clean ones so it's sanitary because obviously baby's spinning on them, babies carrying them around, dropping them everywhere. Um, yeah, and if baby loses one, it's not the end of the world. Um, so I know that these are easy to come by, at least in the UK. Obviously, pick your own brand that's your favorite, but um, this particular one I can get easily enough. Um, and I just think the monkey is so cute because obviously we eat a lot of bananas, so I couldn't resist the monkey. I will say this Fuddle Waddle style and Jelly Cat, they have a monkey that is ridiculously cute and I really want it. And the only reason I didn't get it at this point is because baby has literally two stuffed animals and a comforter. And as far as I was concerned, I was like, I've already got a monkey for baby. I'll wait. And get another monkey for baby later on <laughs> so yeah I just I really pictured my baby snuggling with this um, hopefully baby will snuggle with me even more obviously I am planning on baby carrying um, and baby wearing as much as possible so I don't know if my baby will become as attached to this as a baby who isn't worn all the time but um would be so cute I know it's like kind of ridiculous but I love it I love it like if my kid doesn't love these things I love them like they make me happy I like snuggling with them so I'll play with them um, so since I just talked about baby wearing and baby carrying I'll move on this is the diaper bag I got um, unlike most women it's not a flashy one and this is a backpack style diaper bag. Because I plan on carrying my baby everywhere instead of using a push chair or a pram or a stroller, um, it was really important to me to have something that wasn't gonna create a lot of unevenness or weight just to one side while I'm wearing baby to the front. So a backpack style um, diaper bag is perfect because this is on my back, baby's on my front. And this particular bag, I think most backpack style bags are like this anyway, though this one, I think I already said it, I'm not sure, it's by Baby Mule. Um, and Baby Mule gets really good reviews across the board. Um, 
and you know people who've had them for years and have used them for multiple children say that you're still holding up really well because they're just really well made really great quality um yeah so i was about to say before that that this bag but it's not specifically um special to this bag because i think most backpack style uh, diaper bags have this as well but it can also be carried as a um a messenger bag so it does have an extra uh strap so you can carry it sideways so if for some reason i didn't want to use it as a backpack it does work as a messenger style bag and the zips are all designed to work both as a diaper bag or as a messenger style bag and then um, if you are somebody who's using prams it does come with clips as well um, where are they they tucked in here so there are clips tucked in on the side so that you can clip it to a push chair or a pram or a stroller and um, still utilize the bag and like most diaper bags you know it comes with like a little um, Let's find it. It does come with, um, you know, some of those little extras. Like it, this is like a little changing bag, um, little diaper bag. And this this diaper bag is nice, actually. The one this it comes with, um, but it's quite roomy, so it is um, cloth diaper friendly. Like you can, I've like seen lots of people's comments where that this is really great like sometimes if they're just going out someplace really quick they instead of bringing the entire diaper bag they'll just grab this little changing bag and you know you can have your diapers in here you can have your wipes in here and there's a little changing mat on the back um yeah and because it's like a really good size cloth diapers fit really well in here as well um you know it comes with a wet bag comes with a bottle warmer I'm not planning on using bottles. Never know what will happen, obviously, because, you know, you just never know. But I don't plan on, um, even with breastfeeding, I don't plan on using bottles. I haven't purchased a single bottle um, just because I think that the thing, for me, the thing about bottle feeding with while you're breastfeeding is that Yes, it can be nice because yes, then, you know, like other people can bond with the baby by feeding the baby. But part of breastfeeding isn't just giving your baby the mother's milk. It's also soothing for the baby. So I don't plan on bottle feeding. Um, obviously, sometimes things don't go as planned. But um, yeah, that's not going to be very useful. But like I said, it comes with a wet bag. Um, and that's it. And I just think this will be a really great diaper bag um especially because as well like i got it in this gray color because then it's very guy friendly as well i plan on giving this to the husband to carry around as much as possible if he is with me he will be carrying the bag i do not plan on carrying the baby and the bag so this will be husband's bag to carry around most of the time the only time i will be carrying this around is if he's at work and I am out and about with the baby. I'm walking around with the baby and I need it. So man friendly, female friendly, super functional. Um, this isn't so much an indulgent buy as it is like it's functional and I thought it was worth sharing because it to me is such an ingenious product. Um, going along with that, oh, this is another thing just to make baby wearing easier. Um, I was looking at baby coats because my baby's due in October in England. So obviously while the baby's a newborn, it is going to be cold outside. That being said, I'd still like to be able to go on walks and stuff with the child because even if it's cold out, like I think it's really good to be outside in nature. Um, but of course going outside, you want to make sure your child is warm Baby coats are, in my opinion, generally hideous. And when I was looking at them, I just, because babies are just so stuffed in them. And like, you know, you see them, they're walking like this, 
obviously a baby, a newborn is not going to be walking it. But I just mean in general, these coats are so padded and stuffy, baby can't even move. Um, and then on top of that, if you're going to be baby wearing, like, you, how, like, how would you even like carry a baby that's like in a stuffy suit? I know they make blankets for the baby carriers as well, but this to me was great because this is baby carrier friendly as well as car seat friendly. So instead of a coat, this is, I mean, it's considered like a blanket slash coat for baby, but it's just so cute. I think it's called a star wrap and it's by the brand um, Tuppence and Crumble. Yeah, Tuppence and Crumble. It's made in the UK as well. Um, and this is just like a fleece material. It's not a wool fleece. Um, obviously I'm a vegan, so I wouldn't buy wool items, but, um, and this is a newborn size or I think it's zero to three months or something like that. So in the zero to three months, the hands and feet are completely closed off. Um, when you get the bigger, it's either zero to three or zero to six. I think it's zero to three, um, in the larger sizes. It has the um, the slits with the fold over mitts for the hands and I believe the feet are still closed off but I'm not positive but basically you just slip baby into here and you know hands go in the top part of the star feet go into the bottom part of the star and the reviews on this were so great because people were saying that it's so easy to get baby in and out of this whereas traditional those one piece coats that cover the entire baby are supposed to be extremely hard to get a baby into because they're stuffy, they're tight, they're uncomfortable. Um, yeah, so it's supposed to be really easy to get baby into. And then because it's just like a blankety material, um, you know, you can still, it molds around into something like a carrier. Um, if you're putting it into a car seat, the straps can safely go around baby because I know a lot of um, baby coats they will tell you to take off of baby before you get into the car because it could um, overheat the baby it could be too stuffy for baby um, this one you can actually keep the baby in in the car if you want to um, and you know if you're if you're running the heat in your car that you don't want baby wrapped up in the blanket um, it's really easy and quick to pull baby in and out of it anyway so it wouldn't even disturb the baby very much to pull it in and out and it's just oh my god these babies when they're in this coat look so freaking cute especially with the little pom-pom hat on the top absolutely adorable love these they come in like a million colors um i just went with the charcoal gray just because we don't know if we're having a boy or a girl and everything I have like at the moment is very unisex um yeah so I do plan on once we have the baby ordering it in the next size because baby will out well baby sh will most likely outgrow this while it's still really cold in this country because it stays cold for many months um yeah and I might I'll probably order the next one in a much more fun bright color um, I was thinking maybe like the bright yellow, um, but then I figured I might be like, I was already, I was going to buy it now. And then I was like, well, once I actually have the baby and I know if it's a boy or a girl, I feel like I might be like, oh, I really wish I got this color or that color, not necessarily like blue or pink, but they just make so many fun colors that like, I don't know. They're just, they're really cute. Um, and these were also, like I said, like really really affordable i think it was around 25 pounds i don't remember exactly um yeah but absolutely adorable um i don't have too much else to talk about and this video is getting long so i'm going to try to hurry really really quickly um these people have probably seen these before these are just the gowns that you put on the baby um that are open at the bottom so i have two by this brand called Piccalilli and these are sized zero to six months but this is obviously much much bigger than this one 
And this is, I think, a zero to three months. So this is just for if baby's like really small when it comes out. I might use this one in the beginning and use these when baby gets older. Um, both of them have the mitt hands to cover baby's nails, keep it from scratching itself, and also just to keep it warmer while it's sleeping. Um, but these are just so great because basically if you're doing a lot of nappy changes, um, instead of having to like deal with snaps and stuff, especially in the night when you're trying to sleep, um, you can just, you know, lift this up, pull baby's bum out, do a quick nappy change, and then pull it back over, take the extra fabric, loop it underneath, and that's it. You know, it's a lot easier than dealing with like snaps or zippers in the middle of the night. Um, I might, honestly, if they're really handy, you might even want to keep baby in them during the day. Although I do also plan on keeping my baby um, naked. Not like, I just plan on keeping the baby not in clothing or not at least minimal clothing a lot in the beginning, just because I'll be doing a lot of skin to skin contact. So baby will be kept warm from being against my body, being tied up against, um, being tied up against me in a wrap. Um, so it won't need clothing, even though it will be, the winter time will be inside. Obviously we have heating in the house, so, you know, that's not that important. But for bedtime, absolutely, absolutely great. Um, and I love this brand, Piccalilli. They just do the cutest prints. So this one has little rain clouds because this is England. It rains a lot. And this one has apples on it. And these are all organic materials. And yeah, Pick a Lily just has like the absolute cutest baby clothes. This is another made in the UK brand. Um, really high quality, substantial fabrics. Like it's not cheaply made. Um, I mean, this is a little organic one as well. This is by uh, Mon Petit Bebe. But I like the more fun stuff that's like colorful. Um, but this is just a little plain one for the newborn. Most of my stuff that I have for newborn size is just white, plain, or white and gray, like really simple. Um, just cause, you know, if it's white or it's plain, I can stick it in the washing machine. I know it's clean, um, you know, but it's just, it's easy. Um, Along the lines of clothing, I've got these little baby leggings. I have a couple pairs of these. Um, and originally I thought baby leggings seemed kind of weird because I was like, why would you put leggings on your baby with its diaper? Why don't you just put pants on it? And then um, I've been planning on doing elimination communication with my babe part-time. So I have cloth diapers. I say part-time because I do plan on being a full-time um, EC mommy, but um, I'm not going diaperless. So although I do plan to catch as many peas and poops as absolutely possible, I also will have my baby in a diaper because, you know, we're in an apartment, we're renting, and I feel like even if I wasn't renting, I'd still feel like I'd want this, but you know, we've got carpets everywhere. You know, everything is fabric because, you know, we, we don't have like leather couches and stuff like that. We're not into that. So everything we have is fabric. Um, and I don't really want to be dealing with accidents. I don't have like, I don't have hardwood floors and, you know, leather couches and stuff that if the baby had an accident, it would easily be cleaned up. Like I have things that would get ruined and messed up if baby had an accident and I wouldn't want the stress of dealing with that not just for myself like obviously like I don't want to be stressed out but I also don't want like I don't want me to end up getting so stressed out having to deal with like these accidents and cleaning them up that it rubs off onto the baby and that like I have a baby who realizes like oh when I have an accident I did something bad um I don't want my kid to feel like it did something wrong so to me the diaper is just a nice middleman um I do hope that baby will be really well trained to not like being in a wet or dirty diaper. Trained is the wrong word. Babies are born not wanting to be in a wet or dirty diaper. So 
you know, I just, I hope my baby doesn't get used to being in a dirty diaper that it will let me know the second it soils its diaper and I will change its diaper right away because I don't want my baby to get used to being in its poop or its pee. Like, I don't want to be in a poopy diaper. I don't think my baby wants to be in a poopy diaper. Like, you know what? Like, nobody as an adult wants to wet their pants and be sat around in their soiled pants. So, you know, to me, it just doesn't make sense to keep your baby in a soiled diaper either. Um, it's not a judgmental thing, because obviously, you know, this is my goal in parenting, but it's, you know, I try to be flexible in my mind about a lot of things. And, you know, a lot of times I think we plan things and not everything ends up the way we want it to happen. So, you know, this is just my goal. I'm not trying to say that you're a bad parent if you do something differently, not by any means, because I might end up doing it the same way you do. But um, that's just, this is what I plan to do. So basically, I think I like went off on that tangent and I never fully explained. Baby leggings, I was reading my elimination communication book and they were talking about how baby leggings are great because you can have baby in a diaper, you can keep its legs warm. If you need to really quickly change its diaper or offer it the toilet, you don't have to deal with taking off its pants and everything first. Because basically the thing with elimination communication in a baby is you need to be able to offer your child the toilet very quickly because their ability to hold um, will not be developed until they're older. So you'll have a lot more accidents if you have to deal with, you know, undressing them. So just being able to keep baby warm, warm around the house, just in like little leggings and its diaper, like all I have to do is snap off the diaper really quick put it over the toilet or, you know, the potty and give it the opportunity to go. And then I can put it back in its clothes really easily. Never have to take pants off. So apparently these are actually a lot more functional than I thought. I just thought it was like a fashion thing that people did. And like, I was like, as a fashion thing, I thought it looked kind of silly. Personally, if you love putting these on your baby as a fashion thing, that's great. Like, it's just a personal opinion. Like, don't take anything I say too seriously because, you know, you got to let things roll off of you. Um, almost done. I have two more things to talk about. Um, these milestone baby cards. Um, this isn't so much for baby. This is really more for me and for showing off my baby to other people, basically. So these are just really cute cards that you... Um, put into the photo with your baby when you're taking their picture and like like this just says today I smiled for the first time um you know today I am one week old so you know I just think this is like the cutest thing like today I slept through the night for the first time like it just you know it's just a bunch of different cards that have different things on them and you know, it's just a really easy way to keep track of like when this photo was from, what it signifies. I think it goes up to one year and basically it's like, you know, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Well, it goes to, I think it's weekly and then it goes to monthly. Like once it gets to one month, it starts going to months and then obviously the 12th month is one year. Um, and you know, they've just got little things like today I got my first tooth today I sat up for the first time and I just think they'll make for really cute pictures but not just that it makes for a cute picture but like it says in the photo like exactly what it's for so like if you're looking back on a photo 20 years from now you're not looking at the photo going mm, how old were you in this picture you were about this age or you know I think maybe this was when you did this like it's there it says it like let me show off my baby. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just think that these are really cute idea and the graphics on these are really, really adorable. So um, I just ordered these on Amazon, Milestone Baby Cards. Just the cutest thing. Um, and I much prefer these two. I think I've seen a lot of people, they have like the stickers that you put on the onesies. I just think these are cuter, personally. And 
I think they're about the same price, maybe even cheaper, because those stickers are kind of like, generally the stickers only go like, it's just a monthly sticker, like zero, uh, not zero, but like one month, two month, three month. And like, I've seen them like really expensive, like, you know, I've seen them like for up to like 20 pounds, whereas these baby cards, I think I paid 12 or 13 pounds for. Um, yeah, so I love these. And there's way more of these because it's not just how old the baby is. It like records all these other milestones as they call them. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is this isn't something I bought for baby, but it's something I've been doing for baby that I plan to give to my child at some point in its life. I don't really know when, but um, I've basically been journaling to baby. So it's almost like goes off on this milestone thing, but basically I've just been writing to baby either when it's done something exciting that was new for me to experience, like, you know, the first time I felt its kick or, you know, just little things or like when I go to a midwife's appointment and like, you know, I'd hear some like good news about the baby, like its heartbeat and things like that. Um, you know, I've just been writing to baby and like telling it my thoughts and how I feel and how excited, you know, we are to have this baby come into our lives and you know, I just think that this will be um, so sweet for the baby to, well, not the baby, like, you know, I plan to give this to my child, like, when they're a teenager or an adult. Um, like I said, I don't really, right now I have no way of conceptualizing, like, what is the proper age to give this to my kid. Um, but I just think that this is, like, obviously it's super sentimental. Um you know, but it's it's got a lot of meaning to it because there's so much love that has gone into here. And, you know, I think any of us would love to have received something like this from our parents, you know, like it's just, it's like, it's more than just saying I love you. It's like every little emotion, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it now because I don't know, it's like I'm pregnant, I have hormones, you know, it's crazy, but it's just been so nice writing to my child, even for me now, like regardless of looking into the future and how it might impact my child. I mean, honestly, you never know. They might get this and kind of be like, geez, mom, like you're making a big deal. Like this is okay, whatever. Maybe I'll read it sometime. But I, I don't think that'll be the case. I honestly think that they'll, it'll be a really meaningful gift. Um, you know, if it's given to them at the right time in their life but um even beyond that like right now like it's just been really great for me because it's it's another one of those things that really helps me bond to my baby like when I'm writing in this journal like I'm not writing to a journal like I really feel like I'm like not even just writing to my baby but I feel like I'm talking to my baby like I even feel like as I'm writing and I'm thinking these things that like my baby can hear me in my mind, like my baby hears me and understands what I'm writing. Um, yeah, so just, you know, journaling to your baby is just like such a sweet idea and like, I'm not sure what will happen for the future, but I do at the moment plan that even after baby's born, I'll continue journaling. Um, you know, maybe even into its toddler years. I don't know, because, like, obviously, like, a journal's, like, the type of thing that's really easy to get into at one point in your life and then stop doing it another. But, um, yeah, at the moment, I think that, like, you know, I'll still have things to say to my, you know, my baby, my child, um, maybe even my teenager. Like, who knows? Like, I think there are things that you can write to them, you know, now or I'm talking about the future even but you know like you could write to your teenager and explain things to them about how proud of them you are and how much you love them that maybe you can't say to their face because maybe they're at an age where they're just like whatever mom like oh you're so annoying like you're so like get out of my life like just leave me alone whereas you know you could write it to them and let them you know convey those emotions or even if you're punishing I don't like that word, but, you know, even if your child is, um, you know, being punished in some way or something, like, you could explain your reasoning for it, and then 
I mean, I do think you should be explaining it to them in person as well, but I just mean you could explain it in a journal in a source where they might not be as receptive to it at that age, but maybe when they're older and they're reading this, they'll be more receptive to it. Um, I don't know. But I think journaling to your, either your, you know, baby before it's born, after it's born, toddler, child, teenager, um, you know, I don't know when it will end. It might end, you know, maybe I'll never pick it up and write in it again for the rest of my pregnancy. I don't know. But um, I just think it can be invaluable both for yourself. Like, it's a really good avenue for me to talk to my child and bond with my child. Um, yeah, and it's, it'll be great for them to enjoy later on. So that's everything. This is a really long video. I'm really sorry about that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, obviously I have other things for baby. Oh, I did have, no, I'll talk about that in another video. So it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, like I, I have other things for baby, of course, but these are just the things that like, to me, they're not absolute essentials, but they just, all these items, like they make me happy. They really make me smile. These are the things I like to look at. Um, and I just can't, you know, I can't wait to see my baby like, you know, cuddling its comforter, like, you know, wrapped up at night in its little nightgown or like wearing those little leggings with its pudgy legs, like in its diaper, like, you know, like I just like imagining all like right now, this is just a box of cards. In the future, it's going to be an album of photos, like of my baby. Like these are just things that like make me think and make me just like think of the future and they just make me so happy. So I just thought some of you guys might be interested in having this shared with you. And hopefully if you weren't interested, you've already clicked off and that you're not still listening and that you're just going to be like in the comments writing like, this is really stupid. Don't do this again. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I know this is kind of like a weird, different video, but um, yeah, I just wanted to share. So I'll see you guys for my 32 week update next week after I have a midwife's appointment. All right. Bye. Thank you.